So this morning I got to see Spider-Man Far From Home, and it was far from bad. Welcome to the heart of the stories we tell. My name is Rob, and tonight I will be reviewing... The latest MCU film, Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, instead of doing this like usual, I had to make a slight change-up because I didn't have my laptop until, well, just a little while ago. So, here's with Lilac. Hey, I don't normally do videos this way, but my computer's busted. Well... I should be getting it back either tonight or tomorrow, so this review will go up then, but I wanted to catch my thoughts relatively early. So instead of visuals from the movie, you get to look at me driving. Sh shouldn't I be complaining about politics or something if I do this sort of video? All right, anyway. So I'm on my way to see Spider-Man Far From Home, and I have not been spoiled on any of the major stuff yet. I have a few theories, and I'm just going to throw those out there, so just, like, jump forward if you don't want anything that could be right. What I'm hoping is I'm hoping to see reactions to the snap. We have a lot of questions. Things like, hey, what happened if you were married and your wife got snapped away and you didn't? So then you got remarried over the five years. Now she's been snapped back. Like, the, the, the world of Endgame was a post-apocalyptic mess. Society had pretty much collapsed. It can't just go back to normal, right? Now, having said that, I want to see reactions, especially from Peter, of how things are going to try to get back to normal. I don't expect it, though. I expect that we are going to have Sir... Lamp of the Shade, hung, and that's it. We'll have one or two references. My guess is, is that that scene from the trailer where he picks up his passport, we're going to get a joke about his date of birth being five years off. And that's probably it. And remember the fact that somehow, miraculously, his entire supporting cast must have been snapped because they're all still in high school. When I get to the spoiler section after I actually watch the movie, I'll let you know how much of that is right. The other guess I have is we have an image that people made a big deal about where Nick Fury has the wrong eye patch on. I, I'm betting Chameleon replaces him at one point in the movie. And I'm going to be curious if I'm being eagle-eyed and paying attention, will I notice when the eye patch switches or when the attitude switches just a little bit? My guess is... Beck and Chameleon are working together and that at one point Fury's going to be on to them and as such they're going to replace him with Chameleon and when they do Fury's going to go from being hey you're the hero I need to making Spider-Man an expendable villain and I'm guessing that by the end sequence that's why Happy Hogan is playing a bigger role than Nick Fury because Nick Fury kind of screws him but it's not really Fury now, as much as I haven't been spoiled on what's going on, I have been told that there are big end credit moments, so I'm definitely going to stick around for them. For now, I am almost to the theater. I am hopeful, and I'll be honest, I was not a big fan of Endgame. I retroactively lost opinion of Infinity War, and Infinity War was not one of the best MCU movies, in my opinion. And Homecoming wasn't exactly my favorite Spider-Man movie. It's good, and I love, love the way they're handling a lot of things. But one of my big complaints that I'm guessing is going to have to be adjusted here is I don't want all of his tech to be Tony Stark. I want, I want there to be some discussion of the fact that Peter is intelligent enough I mean, Peter made the webbing. Yeah, I know. Stark made it better because, it, you know, he had like a thousand variant types of webbing in the new suit Stark made for him. But I, I want them to actually showcase the fact that Peter, in and of himself, is an engineering chemist genius without relying on Stark tech. And I'm hoping we're going to see that. But for now, I'll let you go and we will get back to this in a minute. So, um, wow. 
it was totally a good Spider-Man movie. Gonna totally end up giving this one a silver. It did do some of the things I was worried about. It didn't do others. And I'll be honest, I'm as happy for things that were not in it as were things that were. I'm going to just say, though, the movie itself was slow. It was more of a personal drama, and I don't personally have a problem with that. Like, the fight sequences were cool, but they were interspaced with a lot of interpersonal development. And that's good. That's awesome. We really got to know Peter and his supporting cast and all the lampshading of the blip, as they call it now. So, um... Yeah, once I get into full review mode, I'll do a spoiler section. But for right now, I'm just going to say it was pretty good. It's not going to knock anyone's socks off. But I guess uh, there are two end credit sequences. Um, Both of them kind of played more for laughs than for seriousness. Although hidden within the two are something... In the meantime, there was something else that I did not expect. A throwback to one of my least favorite Spider-Man eras ever. So, I have to be honest. The absolute end of the movie kind of made me sit there and be like, that's not the way I really want the MCU to go. But, overall, silver. Good movie. You'll enjoy it. And if you're a Spider-Man fan, you're going to see lots of of Easter eggs and things in there, and go enjoy it. I can't wait to see what they have planned for Phase 4, and to see exactly how Spider-Man steps up and helps become a new Avenger. See you in the spoiler section. So for those of you that don't know what we do around here, I review stories, come up with stories and concepts of how and why we tell stories, and if that sounds interesting... Click the subscribe button, join our little community, maybe even come on and join me in the Patreon. But for now, it's once again time to stop. Spoiler time. And this story is pretty cut and dry. It was a little on the dry side, but it was pretty much just a day in the life of Pete. So let's jump right into the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we're going to start with the good. And the good is amazing. All the characters, all the individual actors, knock it out of the park. I cannot name a single person who was not working their butts off here. And not a single moment that I sat there and felt like it was cheesy or bad. Even while I was laughing and enjoying myself, it was fun and it made perfect sense. And again, the actors are really driving it home. Even if I think Pete takes his mask off a few too many times. The love story between him and MJ is obviously at the forefront. And like I set up in my top thing, I was going to try and pick out when Fury was replaced. And actually, I had this problem even from the beginning, the first time we run into him, where I sat there and said, yeah, he's so over the top. It's like someone's playing him. But I, I don't know. Maybe he's been chameleon the whole time. But we'll get to that at the end. Like I said, some really heartfelt moments, some really great antagonists that aren't really villains, and even those guys get some comeuppance. In general, characterization is hot. The bad. Well, the bad's the same thing that was my problem with the last Spider-Man movie. For a Spider-Man movie, there sure is a lot of Stark in this. Even the villain was tied to Stark more than Pete, and that really, really grates on me. The MacGuffin was Stark's, the storyline was all about how who's going to be the next Iron Man. Screw that. He doesn't need to be the next Iron Man. He's Spider-Man. And on top of that, even when he made his own suit, they kind of still made it all about using the Stark tech. But this movie would have been a home run for me if it weren't for the ugly. And that was the mid-credit scene. Seriously. Revealing Pete's identity on national TV. Are you kidding me? I really thought after the amount of time and effort they put into retconning that sort of thing in the comics, they would know better than to do this in the MCU. It's my least favorite part about Civil War. Civil War was far from my favorite comic book story. And again, there were so many great moments, but like 
he just let MJ know who he was. He just hasn't even really dealt with the fact that May knows who he is. Can can we get some character time on that? But overall, I liked it, even if that disappoints me for what's going forward. But I want to talk about what the other thing I think is going forward. Like I said, I was trying to figure out when they replaced Fury, and I kind of was getting mad at myself. I'm like, I knew when it was the illusion Mysterio was doing, but I kind of got mad at myself going, hmm. It's almost like someone's pretending to be Fury, but still pulling off all the things Fury's doing. Which, of course, surprise, surprise, it was, because it was a Skrull impersonating him. And for a second, I was all like, wait, are we doing secret invasion? But then they called Fury, and Fury's in, like, space or something, and WTF. Well, here's what I think. I think it's a setup for Captain Marvel, too, most likely, but definitely the cosmic end, not the street end of the MCU. I hope it's sword, and I hope that that is something similar to the Damocles slash peak base. But we're going to have to wait and find out. I think this movie would have been better if it wasn't after Endgame. I really think Endgame kind of jumped the shark a little with the whole five-year jump. But we're going to wait and see how that works out. Like I said, I kind of guessed they were just going to hang a lampshade on most of that. And they did. They used it for a joke here or there. But there was no real meat on that. Like... I don't know. And at the same time, the, the movie was kind of slow. If you went in looking for an action-packed adventure, hmm, you're getting more of a character piece. And I don't mind that so much because I love the characters. But I'm curious what you thought. So let me know down in the comment section. And of course, it's time for me to ask you to do... Oh, wait. Before I ask you to do all the things YouTubers always ask you to do, just FYI, for the next couple of videos, I'm going to be linking to a buddy's channel. So not only do I want you to like and share and subscribe to me, but if you're into G.I. Joe toys and just in general being an immature adult, go check him out over at Yo Joe. But for now, a big thank you to my Patreons and a big thank you to all of you just for watching. I think I'll do a recap video when I get the computer back fully up and running. But for now, I hope you have a good night and thank you for walking with me through the heart of Spider-Man Far From Home. Have a good night and thanks for watching.